In the previous video, we talked about how to determine the number of solutions to a linear system based solely on the leading entries of the row echelon form or the reduced row echelon form of the associated augmented matrix. It makes sense that for consistent systems, we can relate the number of free variables to the rank of the augmented matrix. We'll do that in theorem 3.2. Suppose that AUG is the augmented matrix of a consistent linear system in n variables. Then the number of free variables is equal to n, the number of variables, minus the rank of the augmented matrix. OK, so what does this mean? Well, this means that if the rank of the augmented matrix is equal to n, the number of variables, we have a unique solution. If the rank of the augmented matrix is strictly less than n, this means we have infinitely many solutions. And for each free variable, we're going to need to assign a parameter if we're actually writing down the solution. Let me give you a warning here which is that you can only apply this theorem for consistent systems. So this theorem only applies if a linear system is consistent. You should always check first, is the system consistent? OK, so let's look at example 3.3.2. For each part, consider the linear system whose augmented matrix reduces to the given matrix. How many solutions does the linear system have? OK, so we'll start by looking at the first matrix. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to look and say, look at the leading entries. So I have a 3, a 1, and a 2. And oh, I noticed that 2 is leading entry, and it's in the constants column. So what does that mean to me? Well, let's look at this row here. And remember, what this row says is that 0x plus 0y plus 0z is equal to 2. Yikes, 0 is equal to 2. Impossible. No solutions. So in particular, we cannot apply the previous theorem because the system is not consistent. OK, moving on to the second example. Again, I'll look at the leading entries, the 7 and the minus 2. I notice that this system is consistent. There's no leading entry in the column that corresponds to the constants. In this case, the number of variables of the linear system Remember, I just have to look. There's a variable x. There's a variable y. So the number of variables is 2. And that's exactly equal to the number of leading entries. Therefore, the linear system must have a unique solution. Moving on to the third example, we'll do something similar. The first thing we do is we identify the leading entries. Here I have a leading entry in the first column and in the third column. I don't have leading entries in the second column, the fourth column, and the fifth column. In particular, I don't have a leading entry in the column that corresponds to the constants, so I know that the system is consistent. In this case, how many variables do I have? Well, I'd have x1 for the first column, x2, x3, and x4. So the number of variables is equal to 4. And that number is bigger than 2, which is equal to the number of leading entries. Therefore, 
I have 4 minus 2, which is equal to two free variables. And definitely infinitely many solutions. Finally, let's look at the last matrix. Again, I'm going to start by identifying the leading entries. Here they are. And the last row is a row of zeros. So in this case, again, I have four leading entries. And I also have, let's count the variables. I have x1, I have x2, I have x3, and I have x4. So here, let's again write this down. Oh, I know the system's consistent because there's no leading entry in the last column, the column of constants. So in this case, the number of variables, well, I counted four of them. That's exactly the same as the number of leading entries. What does that mean? That means we have a unique solution. So something to watch out for is I've often seen students make a mistake that as soon as they see a row of zeros, they think that the linear system has to have infinitely many solutions, and that's not the case. Remember, you really have to go back and look at the number of leading entries and compare that to the number of variables in the linear system.